Welcome to Smart Business Show, episode 102. I just finished a short-ish interview, about a 15-minute interview with Mario Peshev of Devrex, uh, all about how he turned his business from one-off clients to retainers. Uh, it was really interesting how he talked about they tried to sell it once, uh, sell like retainers once, but whenever a client said, hey, how about a fixed fee, they'd always say, oh, well, okay, uh, in part because they he was not convinced that they really believed in that model. Um, he talked about how he explained the benefits of retainers to clients for a long-term partner. He talked about the size of his clients, which range from Audi to, or which have range from Audi down to, you know, five to 10 person companies, which are by far the majority of his clients. Um, and then he talked about how he attracts the clients too, how he, um, just brings them in, uh, to pay, uh, good in his good retainers. And he says it in there, you know, some people are paying, you know, uh, reasonable five figures a month. Some people are paying, you know, $8,000 a month and, you know, goes down to six once they've done the bulk of the work. But he talks a lot about the partnership. This is a really good one. Uh, if you want to look at moving your business off the feast and famine cycle, which he said he had before too, um, and into kind of a more steady income with retainers. Thanks for watching. So today I'd like to welcome Mario and I should fast beforehand. How do you say your last name properly? It's special. Okay, so I would have got that pretty close anyways. <laughs> um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hey everyone, uh, my name is Mario Peshev. I lead Devrix. Uh, we are a team of, uh, I think, 25 right now. We are building WordPress development gigs, and we also help out with business development, growth, marketing strategy, and whatnot in order to facilitate you know, the overall uh, digital presence of uh, all of our customers. And so in our email... Um, we talked and why I actually asked you to come on the show was you have recently or since we had talked previously moved from one-off client projects to retainers. Can you tell me why you did that? So I do love retainers and the overall model of being able to work with customers in the long run is pretty um, you know, exciting for us. It's something that allowed us to um, fix a bunch of problems within our company. So first off, with you know, 25 people, it's really tough to be to kind of manage the ongoing revenue, the income, and everything else that comes to the company. So that was a you know serious challenge, and we had a lot of peaks, ups and downs, like having you know five large projects taking 200 hours a month each, or having you know a gap of two months when we are doing pre-sales and whatnot. So that was kind of one of the main problems. The other thing that we have identified is that, that uh, a lot of fixed fee projects, obviously we had issues with estimates and with scope creep and all the other stuff that everyone in the industry is complaining about. And then like whenever there's no ongoing maintenance uh, with enough hours within it, we have clients actually receiving the product then start testing and suddenly coming up with new ideas that they have just discovered after you know they started testing the product itself. And the third thing is that like this kind of allowed us to move to a more agency slash partnership model as compared to you know just being a service provider delivering a one off solution and escaping. So as you made your transition, were you able to transfer any of your original clients, your one off clients over to retainers and how did that go? So back in the days we have tried to do the you know, ongoing maintenance slash uh, retainer model, but it didn't really work out at first, uh, mostly due to the fact that we weren't convinced ourselves enough that this is the best model. So it's all about the perception of retainers and, uh, you know, what's the main reason about doing it and, like, what's the benefit of the customer, obviously. Because, you know, obviously for us, it's the best deal because we have, you know, an ongoing account with some clients. We have two, two and a half years ever since we started just doing retainers all the time. But how to explain the, you know, the, the benefit of retainer to a client? That was the main problem. We weren't sure about that. We weren't, uh, we hadn't faced the right problems in order to be able to explain that to the new clients. So the initial clients, we weren't able to convert probably just one or two. But from then on, we, we just decided from now on, we won't take any single client that's like on a fixed fee budget. Every single client would be like an ongoing client. Uh, this kind of allowed us to focus on that and just have no other way around it. You know, no plan B, no backup, no nothing. It's just like the, the, the main thing that we're doing. Uh, and uh, ever since, we've had a lot of positive feedback from customers. Uh, a lot of clients would just want to outsource the whole, you know, digital or technical development department, which actually allows us to do to give lower estimates um, and be around for our customers in the long run so that they don't really deal uh, with any technical stuff whatsoever. 
we are just around for them, we build the initial MVP, we iterate a few more times, we get the final version, then we plan the roadmap for the future, and then pretty much that's it. Mm -hmm. So you said a few times that you didn't explain the benefits of retainers well to your original clients. How do you explain it now? Because it sounds like you you at least have something that you feel is working. Yeah, I actually I actually have a few posts on that, so I'm going to share that, you know, share them with you after the the call, so mm -hmm. that you can post it in the blog post. But uh, anyway, the the main the main thing is that fixed fee estimates are flowed by design. So they, they have a number of different issues. Like first off, you have uh, you're about to start a project with a client. Normally, it's like a one-off client that you just met and you haven't worked with. You don't know anything about their business. You don't know their actual needs. You don't know how they're going to use the, the you know the product. You don't know whether they're a problematic client or like the best client in the universe. So you have mm -hmm. to add some buffers here and there. You have to put some margins and and whatnot. Finally, when you come up with a very uh, you know buffed uh, fixed fee. Uh, turns out that, you know, first off, I think that the Kells group from IBM had that research that, I don't know, 70% of the clients are failed or, or, you know, behind budget and deadline yeah, yeah. and whatnot. That's one thing. And the second thing is that normally when you have the fixed fee, your intention as a service provider is to cut corners and, you know, get the, the best margin. You know, it's like almost like hiring a salesperson only on a paycheck, no commission, no nothing, you know? They don't have an incentive to work for you. It, it's just not something that they really need. They need to have an incentive, they need to have a, an idea of working with you. And that, that's kind of how the, the retainer model works. So, we say to the client, we are not going to charge you, say, $100,000 for a project. We are going to break it down into like uh, five months of $8,000, which is about $40,000. And then, from then on, we are going to do a retainer for another, you know, four to six K or so a month in, and, you know, in order to get to the next step of the project, you know. So basically, it's more of a like hiring uh, a someone in your company, but instead of hiring someone, you're hiring an entire agency with different expertise, with different people with, you know, a lot of benefits. Uh, so we can put the best person to the specific job, assignment, task or whatnot, uh, instead of spending a ton of time on R&D or just doing some mistakes or experimenting, you know, on your website. Uh, additionally, we are going to spend the first couple of months uh, learning uh, quite a lot more about your business, you know, your business needs, your expectations, how you use the software, what are you going to do and whatnot. And at some point of time after those two or three months, we're going to start suggesting an improvement because you're going to know your customer audience better, we're going to know, you know, your bar persona, your partners, your affiliates, your competitors, everyone else. And this would allow us to provide more value that's going to be tailored to your business needs not something that we have just learned during a discovery session at the beginning with a very, you know, limited know-how and limited experience in a given industry. Mm -hmm. So what size are your retainer clients then? Are you, you know, I assume you're not working for like a one-person business that's paying you at least for the $8,000 a month you were talking about. These are larger companies? Um, funnily enough, uh, like we have started working with Audi a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. so we kind of thought that we may be adjusting our retainers to a more enterprise type of customer. But essentially, like when reviewing our customer base every six months or so, it turns out that the vast, vast majority of our customers are companies between 10 and 50 people. Yeah. Um, so it, it's actually pretty interesting because, uh, you know, those are more of a, you know, small to medium enterprises, not like large enterprises mm. or fast paced startups that are extremely good at what they're doing. And they're growing so fast that they simply don't have the time to hire someone and coach them and this and that and this and that. They don't have the time. Plus, if they want to open their own, you know, specialized technical department, they need, you know, technical people, creative people, DevOps and whatnot. They need a, a bunch of people. Then they need a tech lead, then they need a technical manager, then probably a CTO. You know, it's like seven different people for that department alone. And they don't have the time. They don't have the expertise. They don't... They, they, they have a, an immediate problem. Like most of our clients come with, you know, with simply like our hosting is down or like, you know, for example, one of our clients that reached out uh, last month, I think, they said in three months we grew, the, in two months we grew the traffic from zero to 170,000 page views a month. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not that much for us because we have some clients with over 10 million hits a month. Uh, but like, you know, you can imagine the pace, two months from zero to 170, probably in another two months it'd be uh, half a million, in another two months it'd be a million and a half, you know, that kind of growth doesn't have the time to get someone, 
coach them, train them, experiment and whatnot. It requires immediate action, it requires a stable partner to help them in the long run. So how have you attracted those types of clients? Um, it's mostly inbound marketing. We do have a lot of content on DevRix. We do have a team of, uh, I think, three people writing content full time. Most of that, well, part of that is for DevRix, part of that is for some of our uh, clients. Uh, I do, you know, show up here and there, write guest posts and give interviews and, you know, appear on amazing podcasts <laughs> and di different shows like mm -hmm. yours, uh, which kind of helps uh, reaching out people who are not in my kind of uh, Finally, I do at WordCamp, we do have uh, five WordPress core contributors at DevRx, cool, Wings Teams, and what. Uh, so, which, which kind of helps. We use different channels, but uh, most of all, we try to get our personal brand to be uh, as appealing as possible so that whenever someone does the background research, they can only find, you know, good stuff, good feedback, and, you know, amazing work that we have done for free for the community or case studies that we have uh, written. So, you mentioned that when you first started to move to retainers, the biggest hurdle was likely that you didn't really believe in it. Were there any other hurdles that you had moving to retainers? No, not really. <clears throat> it's, uh, again, it's not about not really believing in it. It's something that whenever a client says, yes, but we want a fixed cost, mm. I was able to relate with their, their problem. You know, it was something that I can definitely say, well, yeah, I would understand that. But at the same time, then I say, you know, a, a, you know building a web platform, building a digital presence, it's not a one-off thing. You know, whenever you hire an SEO person, someone to do your advertising campaign, someone dealing with your branding, a marketing agency, you hire them in the long run. Whenever you get a lawyer, whenever you get, you, you just hire them in the long run. Why should, you know, development work be different? Why, why should the overall digital presence, you know, support and maintenance be different? So, you know, I, it, I took the time to just research different companies and what kind of struggles they're having. And most of them were related to giving a fixed fee budget. Apparently, that was a main bottleneck. It was something that's like a lot of guesstimating instead of actually mm -hmm. estimating. A lot of unknown numbers having to be, you know, uh, uh, kind of thrown out of nowhere for a client that you don't know whether they're a good client, you don't have a time to vet them and whatnot. And essentially, we do decline a lot of, uh, you know, requests right now for proposals simply because they're pitching a ton of agencies and they're requiring a uh, fixed fee. It's, it's like we mm -hmm. just say, I'm sorry, but it's bad for your business. Like, whoever does that, you know, if you don't partner up with them in the long run, it, it's just a, you know, recipe for disaster. Yeah, my standard RFP email says I don't do those because you have a you likely have a inside someone with an inside track and it's not me, so I'm not wasting my time. Good luck exactly. with the project exactly. is my something very very short like that. And I probably have one a year that says, No, 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 we just didn't know what to do. Can you help us? And then I look at it. Then often I'll you know I'll take ten minutes to read it because they're often short. Mm -hmm. The ones I get they're not like you know three hundred page RFPs, but you know three or four or five ten yeah. pages. And then I you know sometimes like one recently I went through and it was like number idea A is terrible. Idea B is also terrible. Like no one would ever do this. And they're like, oh really? We just got like a six figure quote from someone. I was like, well that's because they said they do the terrible idea. <laughs> it's really hard. <laughs> you shouldn't do it. It's a bad idea for you. And they're like, oh no one else told us this. Well. I'll do it, but I won't do A, B, or C. I'm not doing any of those things. This is what we'll do, and they. So I yeah. end up working with them, and you know, being quite happy together. But. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, yeah, absolutely. So looking at your business now versus the uh, in the one-off client model, what is your favorite thing about it? Um, it's uh, it's the lack of uh, struggle convincing customers that we are the right fit. Uh, I kind of feel pretty good because we have a bunch of clients that, that have been with us for over a year and a half now, like two of them for mm. two, two and a half years or so. And like the idea that they keep paying those retainer fees, which are like mid five figures or give or take, I mean, depending on the client, it's something that gives me the, the confidence that our value is, you know, two, three, four, five times more expensive than hiring someone in-house. But our clients do appreciate, and they do appreciate the know-how, the business expertise, the fact that we do, you know, work with other clients in other industries and we do understand different problems and we have, you know, expertise with tons of APIs and whatnot. So this is one of my favorite things. I just, you know, 
I, I really do enjoy that appreciation of them. You know, they keep paying us money because they see the value in us. Uh, and the other thing is, um, I keep seeing our clients growing. Like, for example, a few months ago, we had a client say, "Hey, like for a year working together, we managed to double our traffic from uh, a quarter million visitors a month to half a million." You know, it, it's pretty good for us. We're like, uh, once we build the MVP, we increase our traffic from a million hits a month to a million two hundred thousand, simply because. You know, we solved some responsive issues and whatnot. So that kind of things are really exciting. And the only way to kind of have that is to continue working together with the client in the long run and kind of take on responsibility. Like, don't worry, whatever happens, we're in this together. The only chance for you to keep paying me is if we did the best job for you, right? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a, you know, we're in this together. It's like, it's really what it is. I imagine, too, your clients are mostly with one or two developers, right? Or one or two people. So they get to build a real relationship, the teams together, correct? Um, yeah, I mean, even some of the clients, they don't really have developers. They had like either hired a freelancer for building something that scaled up until some size and then it stopped or worked yeah, yeah. with an agency that, you know, failed or something. Some don't even have developers. And the good stuff is that most of them do start with a small retainer, like only 30 hours a month or something like that. And like an agency that we've been working with 40 a month, uh, last month they signed 120 just because they said, you know, our marketing director left, so, you know, we really do need an agency-style relationship, so that's why, you know, we just need a long-term thing with dealing a lot of stuff. Yeah, I just imagine on your side, though, like, if you're working with a client, as an example, or one of your employees, they're generally working with the same client for a long time, right? So they get to build that relationship. So it's not just the relationship with DevRex, it's the relationship with Jill, the you know who's doing development for them. They get to talk and they get to know the teams on both sides, and it's more it's more of like a friendly relationship as well, which makes it easier to work through any of the difficulties in the projects as well. Correct? Yeah, but you know what the fun part is? I actually just replied on Quora one of those things. It was uh, so one of those companies they had like two of the marketing coordinators who were actually working with us for the past two years. Uh, they left. You know, they were actually, the first one left a year ago, the last one, the other one left like a month ago. So while onboarding the new people right now, it turns out that we have a ton of know-how simply because we have stuck around and we, you know, we have access to their home hosting infrastructure, third-party mm -hmm. services, we know their websites, subsites, this and that and this and that. And like, they're about to make a lot of other mistakes unless they trust us simply because they don't know the project better they're like new people or like people from other departments who join the project which is kind of another thing that's really cool with you know building the long-term partnership like someone kind of keeps the know-how in the long run and it's not like a single person that can leave it's like an entire company that has you know a lot of people that even if you have you know turn you know people leaving and joining like it it's still the the, the overall mastermind that's controlling all of it Awesome. So where can people get in touch with you if they want to know more about what DevRex does or, or what you do? And your blog, which you mentioned a little bit, is also really good. It's one, one of the ones I follow. Oh, that's cool. Thanks. So, yeah, uh, you can learn more at devrix.com, which is our agency. We do write a lot of stuff. We have just launched an ultimate business guide for small business owners. I do write at uh, devwp.eu, but given my guest post and stuff like that, I have aggregated most of those in uh, uh, digitalgrowth.co, which is kind of my new content home or whatnot. And you can also ping me on Twitter. It's no fear ink with underscores between no fear and ink. Awesome. Thanks for joining us today, Mario. Thanks for having me. Uh, have a good one. If there's anything else, ping me and I'm going to provide some resources for you. Thanks. Cheers. I hope you got a lot out of that interview with Mario. Uh, I would like to, not just like, I am going to ask you to review the show on iTunes. Go in there, leave me a five-star review. I only like five-star reviews because I'm so good-looking and amazing. And it just helps uh, more people find uh, out about the show. And can you just let some people know about the show uh, and the value it is has provided for you? Thanks.